<laughs> we were out. <laughs> Here we are. Now we're ready. There I we think. Are. Yeah, now I feel much better. <laughs> Now we're geeks. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Where Does This Button Do? It is an educational show about smartphones and technology with us geeks on tour. This is episode number 274, Beyond Basic Editing with Google Photos. Chris, you usually have something first off. What's going on? And this probably is. I say this all the time, but I'll bet this is my favorite topic. I play with editing all the time using Google Photos. But the first tip we're going to give you is one thing that Google Photos can't do, but the free Snapseed companion can. And, you know, you don't need to use this much at all, but if you ever do, it's good to know how to do it. Debbie says when she takes a selfie, she forgets to reverse the camera when taking the image. The default settings on smartphone cameras are to flip the image, meaning you probably never even notice it, but when you take a selfie, it's like looking in the mirror. And if you look at the text, it's reversed. So the default setting in smartphone cameras is to flip selfies so that the writing can be read. This is using the default settings. Sometimes you, you really want the, the right and the left to be accurate rather than, rather than the text to be accurate. So you would turn that setting the other way. And that way, if the camera is not flipping the selfie image, then the text will not be readable. So here's the camera. I tap on settings. And this is an Android, but the iPhone camera has the same setting. Save selfies as previewed. That means like you're looking in a mirror. When you preview a selfie, it's like you're looking in a mirror. And I don't want that. I don't want it saved as preview. I want it to flip it so that the text can be read. All right. So now, Debbie's real question, though, is she has a picture that got taken the wrong way. You know, the text is backwards like this. Is there a way in Google Photos? No. In, in Google Photos proper, there is not a flip command. But there is in Snapseed. If you've been following us for any length of time, you know that we really like the free separate program called Snapseed. And if you install it on your phone, you can get to it from Google Photos. So I am in Google Photos Edit. I go to More and then Snapseed. With that picture where the text is backwards, I go to Tools and Rotate. And then it's... It's this bottom one here that has arrows pointing in that means it flips it horizontal. There we go. Now you can read the text and it looks it looks better. So like I said, it doesn't happen very often, but if you end up with a picture like this on the screen, where your whole point was to see the sign that says Pearl Harbor National Memorial and it's in mirror image, it's good to know where you can fix it. <laughs> okay, great. Well, hi everyone. I'm Jim. And together with my wife, Chris, we are geeks on tour. Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? And do you have questions about your iPad or your iPhone or your Android devices? And how do you learn about these amazing devices? Well, we are geeks, also known as propeller heads, but we are geeks who teach. And we think the best way to learn is in bite-sized pieces on an ongoing basis. So we come up with a topic each time. We learn <laughs> and then we teach you. And each time I'm talking about twice a month on Sundays at 2 p.m. And if you subscribe to our mailing list, our newsletter list, you will get notified the Sundays that we're going live. 
How do they subscribe to our newsletter? Well, they can go right to geeksontour.com slash news, or they can hit this QR code that I have somewhere here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll put it up a few times. I but, think uh, I think it's there. But Yeah, it's an emailed newsletter, and it you get a lesson every week and then notifications of these shows. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's see. Where are we now, Chris? Uh, we're home, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and it is spring. It's spectacular out there. It's been beautiful every day, it seems. And those hibiscus, the bottom two flowers, those that's our flowers. It, I mean... And what a gorgeous picture. That's your picture. How did you do that one that's so close up? I have a macro setting on my Pixel 7 phone. And I can get in really close. I forget how close you can get, but it's it's within less than an inch or about. And you got to be steady. Now, I didn't use any. This is all handheld. So... And there's no attachments. It's, no attachments. It's what's built into your phone. Yeah. Right. You can get attachments, but... The stuff that's built in does such a great job. And then with the... I don't even think I edited that. Maybe a little bit. Oh, and then we went to Flamingo Gardens. Oh, that was wonderful. Do you want to play that little video? Sure. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah, I think it's I just less, there. less than a minute. Jim used Google. I use Google Photos to make this video. Just a couple of clicks. doing that stuff occasionally <laughs> <laughs> i do want to thank our premium members they're what makes our work possible you are wonderful we appreciate you it's 68 dollars for one year or if you want to get a recurring membership it's 58 dollars. you can join at geeksontour.com slash join now that'd be great if you did that and hello to all of you who are joining us today yeah some of you here are premium members and we appreciate you in so, oh yeah let's see that's not very big is it okay that's better <laughs> Linda Bullerman Largo. Sunny Largo not too far away Dallas Fort Worth area okay Jolin good to see you from the low country and yeah yeah, Bob Gustisha. Gustisha. Yes, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Oh, well, except on Mondays. <laughs> well, we see him regularly, but he is our security expert. Detlef from Berlin. It's nice and warm over there. Hmm. Yeah. Richard, Southern California. Stan. Another Leesburg. Yeah, Leesburg. And Laura Lee, I hope. And Diana Wright. On the road to Sugarland. Uh, where's that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, a couple of more. Liz, Lyle. Oh, Mike. Yeah, who's there? That's Mike. He's okay. getting. He'll be right in line for that eclipse tomorrow. Mm. If he's at home, I guess. If, uh, <laughs> okay, oh. John says, remember the thumbs up icon, and Chris and Jim, yeah. Greetings, Niagara Falls. It didn't occur to me to put in photos from eclipses. I have photos. We were at the 2017 eclipse and took some photos. Well, maybe when we get to the backstage pass. We'll, we'll talk about we'll that. We'll do that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like fun. And about the backstage pass, it's a premium members only meeting. It's on Zoom right after this show. You get a link from an email that Chris sent out earlier this, today. Or you can go to our website and click on the icon that looks like that. All right. 
Beyond the Basics. Beyond the Basics, editing with Google Photos. So what do I mean by Beyond the Basics? I don't mean more difficult. I mean, some of the things I'm going to show you are just single click, but they might be single click with a premium feature, something that you have to be subscribed to Google One for. Or even without premium features, a lot of people don't know about all the basic features there are and the fact that you can combine them to make pictures better. So that's what I'm going to be teaching today. By premium feature, I mean that you need it. It has that multicolored one on it. You'll see that very prominently and I'll show it to you. How do you know if you are a Google One? Okay, perfect question, Kathleen. I'm not sure if I have Google One. My first try, Apple thought that this was not compatible with Mac. Second time, well, you know that you are a Google One subscriber if you're Google account button has a multi-colored circle around it. So just go to photos.google.com or Gmail or just google.com and make sure you're signed in. That gives you a little face or a little some a circle with your initials in the upper right hand corner. If it has a multicolor ring around it, you are a Google One subscriber. If there's no ring, then you're not. And for Google Photos, that means that you are probably struggling to live within the 15 gigabyte maximum storage space that they give you for free. I highly recommend paying the $20 a year to get the premium features, whether you need the storage or not, but you probably do. <laughs> okay. The other thing to know is that Google Photos has three versions. There's the web version. Sometimes I call it the computer version, but it's really the web version because there is no computer software for Google Photos. It is just a web site. Then there are the mobile apps, the apps that you get from your app stores and install on your iPhone or your Android phone. And all three versions have slight differences. In general, the web version has the fewest features. Then comes the iPhone, the iOS version, and the Android version is the only one that has text on photo, stabilize video, motion photo, select frame, and blur. So when we get to those, I will remind you that this is an Android only feature. Will they come to the others? Maybe. I mean, there's there were a lot of things that used to be Android only and came to the iPhone and even to the web version. So it might happen, but there's no promises. All right. So the first one that I want to show you, and I am going to do this on the computer, on the web version. The first one is just how you can combine multiple basic edits. So I'm going to go to my Google Photos, just photos.google.com. You make sure that you are signed in with your account. See that little colored ring around my, around my account button? That means that I am a Google One subscriber. I am not living within the free 15 gigabytes. I'm paying $20 a month, $20 a year, $2 a month. Very important. <laughs> okay, so this photo. What is wrong with this photo? And notice that I have a description. I have a caption on this photo of Liz, me, and Melinda at Morrow Bay. That'll come in to play later. So I click on edit. First of all, you just go into the edit mode. And in a second, Notice this, we're on suggestions and it's taking a minute. That's because the suggestions are you are specific to this photo. So portrait, for example, would not show up if there weren't any faces in the picture. Uh, I'm just, and notice these multicolored ones. These are the things that only work if you have a Google One subscription. I'm going to stick to non-premium features for this example. 
So first is suggestions, then comes crop and rotate, then comes tools, then comes adjustments. On adjustments, what I want is just to brighten the shadows. I don't want to brighten the whole thing because look how that blows out the sky. So I, I use this feature called shadow and I just brighten the shadows. But now that's still just a little mm, mushy. So there's another one called Pop that I really Brightening like. Writing shadows in photos with oh. free editing tools is achievable. Here's it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Pop will give more definition, more sharpness. Notice the rock in the background there. That you can really tell what, what Pop is doing. I like Pop a lot. Um, then... Then, okay, I'll say, well, what, was, what did my original look like? Have I improved it? You right click. I mean, you, no, you just click and hold. You click and hold, that's my original. Let go, you see how it's improved. Maybe it can use a little bit more lightness even. There, yeah, okay. Click and hold, that's the original, that's better. And notice it says save. So I'm gonna save that. We'll talk about save versus save a copy in a little bit. Okay, next. So that was all without using premium features. Rotate and make it look better. So here, in my photos, I'm gonna to go to this one. Now, if you didn't know what that was, you'd say, oh, this was a mistake, this was just garbage. But I happen to know that it was a really pretty hanging garden and the photo is just sideways. I click edit and crop and rotate. Over here, here is the rotate. Now notice it only rotates counterclockwise. So I'm gonna to have to click it. That's completely upside down. There, that's the right way. Now I need to make it look brighter. And I could use this one called dynamic. Let me just show you what that does. Boom, one click, that really does the trick. But notice that I no longer can save. I am being forced to save a copy. If you use any of the premium edits, you're forced to save a copy. So I'm not gonna do that. Notice if I just click it again, it goes off. So you can click on an option, you can unselect that option. I'm gonna go over to settings, adjustments, and increase light in the shadow, and add some pop. There, that's almost as good as that dynamic was. And I like seeing that the sky can get more blue, so I'm gonna increase the blue tone. Click and hold to see my original. Let go to see what I've done. I like it, I save. And now, now we're gonna talk about save versus save a copy. The basic features allow you to save over your original. Then you can always revert to see your original. The premium features force you to save a copy. Then you have to decide whether or not to delete your original if you don't want two copies. And here's the part that I really am unhappy with. You lose any captions. So let me, let me demonstrate. And we're going to this picture. Now I have a caption on this picture. Not This is not snow. <laughs> this looks like snow, doesn't it? Yeah. It did. <laughs> this, is, does. this is White Sands National Park in, in New Mexico. That is not snow. So there is a caption. Now I click on edit and dynamic is a premium feature. I click on dynamic and I am forced to save a copy. If I click on just enhance, I can save. And look at that, I kind of, in this case, I kind of like the enhance better than the dynamic. 
So I'm just going to click Save. And I'm going to go on to the next picture. And, nope, I want, yeah, that picture. And edit. And I'll try Enhance, but it does very little. I can click and hold, and Enhance just does very little. But Dynamic, whoa, now I like that. Now that one is worth the save a copy. Now I have to debate about whether I'm going to delete the original. But first, where is that copy? It gets put into your photos according to the date it was taken. I have no idea what date that picture was taken. But I know that it was added just now. So I can go to Explore and Recently Added, and there is the new photo. And I like that a lot. I'm going to add it to my the album that I'm working with right now, which is Show 274, because this is Show 274. And then I will go back and delete the old one. There. But notice beautiful walk along the river in Golden, Colorado. The new one does not have that caption. So before I delete the old one, I should copy the caption and paste it in here. What a pain. But, <laughs> you know, so just good for you to know. In my, if I can use the basic edits and not use a premium feature, that's the way I'll go just to avoid this problem. All right, so I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. Great. Oh, look at that. Hey. Jay Sanford, thank, thank you, you so much. A super chat. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that. That really helps us. And uh, it's a reminder that all y'all can probably send us some money just like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Kathleen says her face has multicolored circle. Yay! Yay! How's <laughs> uh, in cloudy and rainy Springfield? Uh-oh. I hope it clears up for you. And honey, Hilton Head Island. Yay! Good to see everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Where are we? All right, so, so this example was just to show you that the premium features are not more difficult. They are easy. They are AI. The dynamic option. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. The dynamic option studies the photo and puts in place all sorts of variety of edits to make it look better. But all you have to do is one click on dynamic. If that's not worth 20 bucks a year, I, I, I am not, a, I don't get a commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think we should, huh? Okay, now I'm going to go to the phone just because. I'm going to go to the iPhone first and find these same photos. Uh, so here are the same photos and I want to look at this one. That good? Yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks a little bit darker Dark. than it actually is, so let me just increase the brightness here. There, they can see that a little better. Oh yeah. So what was this? This is an old photo. That's Jim right there. <laughs> this was an old print in an album that had obviously gotten deteriorated badly. So, sorry, I am not going to show you how you can fix this and make it look like a good, vibrant color picture again. There may be tools that do that. 
There are. But not Google Photos. There, I mean, yeah, there are tools, but not Google Photos. So let me show you what I'm going to do with this one. First of all, I'm going to crop it. Most every photo can be improved with a crop. So I tap Edit. This is an iPhone, just not that it matters, but <laughs> to let you know. And I'm going to just, I'm going to drag in to get closer to the kids. I mean, that's better right there. But this red is just too, too obnoxious. And I can't fix it. Therefore, I think it'll look better as a black and white. And that is a filter. So notice there's all sorts of options on the bottom line. Depending on which one you've selected on the bottom line, you get different options on the top line. Filters is used to be the only edit feature that we had. You remember that? Yeah. I mean that was it, it, if you Long wanted time ago, I if, remember. <laughs> if you wanted to edit a picture, people asked, well, which filter should I use? You know, that's all there was. Filters still exist. But I rarely use them except for black and white. And the black and white is all the way at the end. I tap that. Isn't that better? I, I think that's a lot better picture. And it's an old picture, so black and white is fine. Now there's a few different options even for black and white. So you have to try each one. And that's where the fun comes in. Just keep pushing buttons, say, oh, what does this button do? What does this button do? Ah, okay, I think I like that one the best. Notice the one that is in place is blue and has a chuck mark on it. And I can save. And save. Now, let's say I show this picture to Jim and he says, oh, you know, I give me that original. I think I do have a tool that can fix it better. And I say, uh-oh. I just saved over the original. So, uh oh. So so I'm out of luck. You're in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. So the way to get back to the original is you have to go back into edit and then you'll see this option to revert. Revert. And then you have to save the reverted copy. Now I'm back to the original. I could send that to him and say, have at it. Okay. Now, portrait and blur. This one. You notice that I use pictures of Jim a lot. <laughs> I'm so lucky. He's such, he's such a good uh, target. <laughs> Anyway, I love this picture of him, how he's smiling, but I don't like all this stuff in the background. Number one, I'll crop it. Like I said, most every photo can be improved with a crop. I just get closer to him, crop out that guy in the background. All right. But now there's still a bunch of mess back there. If I go to suggestions, Notice this one called Portrait, and that's the one I say, you will not see Portrait if you're looking at a picture of a mountain, because these are AI-delivered options. Suggest options. Suggestions, yes. So I will tap on Portrait, and did you see what that did? Let me untap it and tap it. It lightens up his face and it blurs the background. So that's what portrait is for, is for, lighten, is for brightening faces and blurring background. I want the background blurred even more though. So that is under tools and blur. Notice it was set to 12 by that portrait feature, but I can just drag over I'm going to put it all the way to 100. That's what I want. I just want his face. And I'm done with that. Now, what's color focus? That leaves the person in color and change the background to black and white. So that's even more getting rid of the background. Eh, but we don't, I don't need that. 
I'm done. Now I want a vignette. You know what vignette means? Just darkening the edges. It kind of puts a focus on the center of the picture. And that you'll find on adjustments. And it's all the way at the end. Look at all these adjustments. These are the ones that you can just play with forever. See, see what they do. There's vignette. And there's just a tiny bit of vignette. I want more. There we go. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> now, what did my original look like? Touch and hold. And there you see the, the touch and hold show me the original does not uncrop it. So it's the cropped original. And I let go and I see what I've done. Now, I have rightly been accused of overdoing it at times. No, I can't believe it. <laughs> but I I like them, and that's all that counts. That's right? all that counts. All <laughs> Done. Right. Yeah. And save. <clears throat> now, uh-huh. I, th I think this is something that recently changed. Notice I told you that you're forced to save a copy. This is the iPhone. I, I, and I'm not being forced to save a copy. Hmm. But I do want to because I'm going to use these. Mm, I don't want to have to revert. So on that one. All right. What's next? So that was... Portrait and portrait is only an option when faces are in a photo. That's the artificial intelligence at work. <laughs> Just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, you can just keep having fun with your photos. So there's that same picture of Jim, but with the background removed. How did I do that? And the shark, how did I do that? Oh, we'll have to keep you guessing. Uh, <laughs> have you heard of AI making pictures? <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and maybe in the backstage pass, I'll show you exactly how I did this picture, okay? Now, blurring without a face. So here is a photo of a flower and I want, yeah, I'm not gonna play this video. I want there to be a blurred background, but there's no face in this photo, so I'm not gonna get the portrait option. And, okay, so let me pull it up on the iPhone. I'm still gonna use the iPhone. And here is that picture. I tap on edit. And first thing is to notice that under suggestions, I am not getting portrait or blur background. Why? Because there's not a face in the photo. So let's go over to tools and see what I get. I get magic eraser. I do not get blur. This is one of the differences between the iPhone and the Android. So I'm iPhone does not offer blur when it's not a face. So I'm on my Android now, and I open that flower, and I edit. And I'm still not offered a suggestion of portrait. That, that makes sense, because it's not a face. But I can go to Tools, and I see blur. It's a little dark. And if I tap on blur, I can put it all the way at 100. Notice the background has gotten really blurred. And then what's this, what's this little circle thing? Well, that means since it's not blurring the background against a face, you can tell it what you want blur and what you want in focus. That little circle, if I if I move to the trees in the background, then the foreground gets blurred and the background is in focus. 
now followers are in focus. So you see, that's, that's what blur does. And the depth can adjust how, how close or far you make the blurriness go. This one is very clear. The flower is very much in the foreground and the fence and the leaves are definitely in the background. So that is blurring the background when it's not a face only available on Android. And here I am absolutely being forced to save a copy. And then I might want to delete the original. Okay. Text on photos. This is another one that is as for Google Photos, it is available on the Android only. Now on the iPhone, you have Apple Photos can add text. And then when you're done, Google Photos sees it. So you do have your options and Snapseed works on both. But let me do the demo first and then the, and then the video. So here's a picture of flowers. I tap edit. I scroll over on the bottom line until I get to markup and then text. And notice I have a bunch of different colors, but I think white will be best. This is a dark background. And I'll type Happy Valentine's. I spelled that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> D I. No. Keep trying. There. I'll just tap the suggested word. <laughs> Forget about typing and done. And now I can take my two fingers and move that. I can change the size by, by squishing or spreading my fingers. I can change the angle. I can change the location. And when I like it, I tap done and save copy. All right. But now there's another little trick with markup and that's the video. How do you use Google Photos and add text with a solid background to a photo? Notice in this photo that word hibiscus is hard to read. Let me show you a trick. If you tap edit and go to markup, you have the choice of pen, highlighter, and text. I'm going to choose highlighter first, and this order is important. And I'm going to choose the black color. And then I just rub a section of the photo I'm just going to do the right corner to give myself a solid background. Now I'll go to text and type hibiscus. And I can even make it green, tap outside, to exert, and then move that down over. So that's why you have to do it in this order. You have to make the background first, then add the text. I use that all the time. I <laughs> I, I I really like that that little tip. Oh. Go ahead. Now we're ready for Magic Eraser, and once again, I want to I want to demo a couple first, and then and then play the video. So Magic Eraser means get rid of unwanted parts of your photo. Like in this example, I think it's a pretty picture of a pumpkin patch, but there's this nasty piece of garbage here. I tap Edit, and. It's not under suggestions, therefore I need to go to Tools and Magic Eraser. And it's looking to see if there's something that AI thinks should be erased. I guess it likes that little piece of garbage, I don't know. <laughs> and now I want to zoom in, so I use two fingers to zoom in, two fingers to move the photo, and then one finger to select the piece of garbage. And it's gone. I love that. And done. And it is a premium feature, so on the Android, you're forced to save a copy. And the next option, see that scratch on his face? Edit. And Tools and Magic Eraser. And once again, I'm going to zoom in and then just touch on the scratch. It's gone. And I would done and I'd save a copy, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother. I will reset. 
and done and cancel. Okay, so those, those are just a couple of my examples. Oh, one more. Uh, that is the telephone wires. This is my this is my favorite example. <laughs> Edit. Look at all those telephone wires, and it's not under suggestions. So I go to Tools and Magic Eraser, and watch this. It instantly suggests of getting rid of those wires. I just tap Erase All, and it's gone. All right, now video 791. Magic Eraser started out only available on the Pixel. It is now available for all phones, not just Pixels. So I, we want to show you. I'm going to use my Samsung for this one, but it does work just the same on the iPhone. Oh, you, you do need to be a paid subscriber. If you are just using the free Google Photos 15 gigabyte account, then you will see this option when you go in to edit, but it won't work. It will say, hey, you need to pay if you want to have this option. There's lots of editing tools that are for paid subscribers only. Now, being a paid subscriber is only two bucks a month. You know? Do it. it. It's worth it. <laughs> it is worth it for these tools. Okay. See if you agree. Watch this. So I go into Google Photos. Here's a photo of us on the beach. And notice those two people in the background. I tap on Edit. And then... Magic Eraser appears right away if it's, if it's a photo that is appropriate for Magic Eraser. But if it doesn't, then it's under the Tools. It's under Tools, and you'll notice a multicolored one. That means you must be a Google One subscriber. That's what I was talking about, minimum $2 a month, in order for this feature to work. All I have to do is tap Magic Eraser. It investigates the picture and it says, hmm, I'll bet you would like to have those people in the background gone. Notice how the people in the background have been outlined. I tap Erase All and they're gone. This was a picture we took in Bali of a, of a statue that was awesome. I want to get rid of this guy. This is not a friend. This is this is just somebody that got into my picture. So I'll tap edit and I'll tap magic eraser. But you'll see the suggestions that it finds is not what I wanted. Since this guy is so big, it thinks that that's somebody who belongs in the picture and it wants to delete these other folks. No, that's not what I want. So what I do is I just rub over him. And notice I am not exactly outlining him, but Magic Eraser does exactly outline him and gets rid of him. All right. And the last one is probably the most amazing, and that is telephone wires. It totally ruins this photo of a beautiful doorway. And so all of these wires, edit, and now Magic Eraser doesn't come up right in the beginning here. So I'll scroll over to Tools, and there's Magic Eraser. Yeah, we, we already did uh, the telephone wires, so I think we'll save a little bit of time there. But Magic Eraser is pretty cool. Did you know that Google Photos can edit not just photos, but videos? as well. And one thing that Hi, a lot of people Mark. don't know is that it can even rotate a video. I mean, have you ever taken a video with your phone and it came out sideways? You don't know what happened, what you did wrong, but it's sideways. Okay, watch this. So here, 
here's a video and it is sideways and it's not you, know, you say well how about rotating your phone no nope, that doesn't help you know it was taken wrong so I want to edit it and just like we rotated a picture you can rotate a video so edit it's a it's part of the crop feature so I go to crop and there it is right there the rotate it only goes counterclockwise so I have to do I have to put us on our heads first and I'm there. dizzy <laughs> okay so now it's straight what else might I do with this video well let's I'm watch it in Hyde Park Oh, did I miss it? The sun was actually out there for a minute. <laughs> It'll be out again. And there comes a point in the middle where something happens that I then want to get rid of. There. Now it's turned upside down again. I think that I thought I was done with the video and my hand is hanging down. So I just want to crop that all out. That is part of the video. When I tap on video, I get this whole film strip. And then there are beginning points and end points where I can trim, trim the video to what I want. And then save copy. But you can also... You can do most of the other editing things that we've done. You know, you can brighten it. You can crop it. Videos, just like you do photos. And then there are... Oh, let's do this one. Um, let me go back into that. So notice now it's only 16 seconds. When I go into edit, there's this new thing called effects now most of these effects i can't i can't imagine ever using why would i want it to look like i have torn paper on my video i i just don't get that. artsy fartsy stuff for it, kids okay <laughs> or or why would i want this fire breathing <laughs> color or or light leak i mean it's like using a bad camera i i don't get that but there is one here that is kind of cool, and that is fisheye. So in Hyde Park. there's a fisheye. Oh, I miss it. The sun was actually out there for a minute. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. That's that's called effects. And if I decide I want to just capture one frame. I can go back to edit and notice the export frame. So I say right right there where it just has Jim and me, I say, gee, I wish I had a picture of that and I don't. Yeah, you do. You just tap export frame. Now you have a, a picture of it. Okay. So that was, I hope I did it all, rotate, trim, Export frame, adjust, that's the brightness and stuff. Effects, that's where I did the fisheye. One more thing you can do, and this is this is just the best, is stabilize. <laughs> Your favorite. <laughs> well, no, and he's not my favorite because it doesn't happen very often. But if you have a video that's really jerky, like the top example there, all you have to do is edit Tap that little stabilize button and it smooths it out. It is really, really good. And notice you can also remove sound from a video if, if you want. All right. Document crop. Video 656. 656. Hi, this is Chris Gould with Geeks on Tour and Learn Google Photos. And today I want to show you the crop document feature in Google Photos editing. Open up Photos, and I have a photo 
that I took of a business card. So notice how it's a little bit skewed. Well, I want to crop this. So I'll go into Edit and tap Crop. But if I just do a normal crop, notice if I get all the black off, I'm going to end up cutting some of the content of the card off. So this is what crop document is for. I'll reset, go back to the normal. This little button right here, what does this button do? See how the four corners all are kind of separate rather than going together? That is crop document. Now I can put each corner right on the corner and notice this magnification spot here is how I can put it exactly in the corner. And this one. Now get all four corners exactly right. And notice, notice the skew on it. When I tap Done, watch what happens. It straightens it and flattens it out and makes it look perfect. Save. And that is called Crop Document. Yep, on Android only. Yeah. yeah. And here's a couple of questions here. Let's see, Kathleen on iMac, what do you use to make a space available to add text and to have the text show up on a Mac? I don't know. I mean, I would I would assume that the iPhoto, the Photos app that comes with your Mac. There is no app for the Mac that's Google Photos. Google it's Photos. Just the web. Just the web. And, yeah. and the same thing on a PC, really. And then Julie wants to know, can videos be edited from the computer? Just Android. N no, iPhone can do it too. Oh, oh, well, well, but sorry, it's it's mo mobile thing, apps. Yeah. yeah, mobile apps, not uh, not computers. Not computers. But there are video editing programs oh, for God, your computer. Oh God, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, markup. I I think so. Yeah. I mean, markup on the iPhone, on the iOS, Apple Photos, can do text, and I think, I think you can do a background too. I'm not sure, but that's that's where I would look. Okay, document crop. Oh, and that document, it's called document crop, but it doesn't have to be a document. For example, what you see on the screen here is where we projected slides onto a screen and then took photos, but I didn't do a very good job of taking the photo. It's completely skewed. I used that document crop option to make the photo that's on the bottom. And just pick a frame. One more, pick a frame, and I think I can do this faster than three minutes if I do it. Okay. Without the video. Whatever you want. <laughs> so the point <coughs> is that you've taken a motion photo on iPhones. It's called Live Photo. And you don't like the still that it got. So, for example, this one is a motion photo. The still that it shows me has her looking, looking away. But if I play it, you will see... That there's, yeah, so there is a place in this video, I mean, in this motion photo or live photo where she is looking at the camera and smiling. I want that one. This is, once again, Android only. There's another way to do it on iPhones. And I just swipe up on the picture and I will see this little film strip of all the pieces of the motion photo. I can find where she's looking at the camera and smiling and tap save copy. Done. This is now a photo of her looking at the camera on taking live or motion photos all the time just because of that. <laughs> Good. Being able to cat <clears throat> and for blinking. If people are blinking and their eyes are closed, if you took it as a motion photo, you'll be able to get them with their eyes open. 
Okay. So. I don't see any other, other questions. questions. Okay. So Do we, you have any questions? We did the questions. Okay. All right. Reminding you folks out there, if you're watching on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell to get notified when we go live or when we upload any videos. And we're doing, well, a fair number of them these days, right? Okay, the backstage pass. Again, that's something that we do right after this show. It's live on Zoom. It's a meeting with our community, with our folks, the premium members. That's one of the the benefits of becoming a member and you can do that at geeksontour.com slash join now. Chris is doing these photo workshops. She's updating her Learn Google Photos book and this is part of it and these are live workshops and chats so it's also done on Zoom and it's great. Uh, it's free for premium members and, and not available if you're not a member. And and yeah, uh, just go to geeksontour.com slash classes and you will see workshop number four listed there. You'll also see the recordings of, of one, two, and three. Right. Well, did you learn something? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> to use the premium editing features, you need A, an expensive phone, B, Google One, or C, a business Google account. B, Google One. Okay. If you don't see the portrait suggestion, it's probably because A, there's no face in the picture, B, Google One, or C, it's an old phone. A, there's no face in the picture. It could be an old phone. <laughs> to undo edits that were saved to a photo, you tap the edit button and choose what? You should see the word revert in the corner. And that'll take you back to your original. Okay, true or false, when you use the premium editing features and choose save a copy, you may lose descriptions and locations. Yes. And yes. <laughs> Why do I say may? Well, because if, if per chance you have a different flow than I do and you added the descriptions before uploading them to Google Photos, then those don't go away. But if you added them using Google Photos and you save a copy, your, your captions are gone. Cool. True or false, video editing is only available on mobile. True. That's, yeah. Which Google Photos editing feature is not available for videos? A, trim, B, crop, C, adjustments, D, magic eraser, or E, stabilize? Just D. You can trim videos. You can you can crop videos. You can use the adjustments of brighten and shadows, and you can stabilize, but you can't use Magic Eraser. <laughs> okay. Backstage pass. I think we've uh, talked about that enough. So, Chris, what's the web page that lists all of our YouTube shows? Geeksontour.com. Then the menu item is YouTube show. Now we now we have two. So you have to. Hover on YouTube show and then pick <laughs> button. The what does this button do? The other one is fun with photos. That's a good one too. That is a good one. And the web page lists all of our recent newsletters. And one just went out yesterday, right? One just went out, and it's on the website. If you didn't get it via email, what's uh, geeksontour.com? The menu item is blogs and news, and you'll find newsletters under there. Okay, great. And why do people pay fifty-eight dollars a year to join Geeks on Tour? Well, we have lots of benefits and getting seems like we're getting more every day. Backstage Pass is one of them. You get to ask us questions on our Q&A page, hundreds of videos, written notes from these YouTube shows, and our, the e-books, the PDF of, of our book, Learn Google Photos. That's all part of membership. And some people join and pay us the money just to say thank you for all that we do for free. Right? And that's nice. We appreciate that. So become a member. <clears throat> join at geeksontour.com slash join now. And sign up for our free newsletters, geeksontour.com news. Members get all the books. Do it all. Subscribe to the channel. 
Why do we join? Because you're worth it. <laughs> I'm Jim. I never... Ah, uh, there's the QR code for the newsletter. I knew it was in there, there somewhere. There we go. I was here somewhere. <laughs> you, you know. See, we saved the best for last. <laughs> I need to put that on a little button here. Yeah, so we can yeah. <laughs> so that's about it. Thank you all for joining, and we'll see you next time on What Does This Button Do?